let's understand the flow of raw input text through the pre-trained BERT model and finally coming out on the other side of the model as a class prediction in the context of these task specific fine tuning. So in BERT based model like uh, what we are using here BERT for sequence classification, the CLS token that is short for classification serves as a special token that is prepended to the input sequence and it is designed to be used as an aggregate representation of the entire input sequence for classification task. Here is a step-by-step -step breakdown of how the CLS token is handled during the fine-tuning for a specific classification task. So the first step is tokenization. During the pre-processing of the input text, the tokenizer inserts the CLS token at the beginning of the input sequence. For example, if the input text is, uh, this is a sample sentence, the tokenizer input would look like CLS, then this is the sample sentence. And um, then embedding the tokenized input sequence, including the CLS token, is passed through the BART model's embedding layer, which converts the tokens into continuous valued word vectors. And then the encoder layers, the, embed the embedded input sequence is then processed through the BART model's encoder layer, which consists of self-attention mechanisms and feedforward neural networks. During this process, the model learns to capture the semantic and syntactic information present in the input sequence as well as any relationships between the tokens and the final hidden state of CLS will come after this. So at the end of the BART model's encoder layer, each token has a corresponding hidden state vector. For the CLS token, its final hidden state is used as an aggregated representation of the entire input sequence. This vector is then passed to the task-specific classification layer. And then the linear layer, the final hidden state of the CLS token is fed into a linear layer which maps the 768 dimensional vector to a vector of size equal to the number of target classes. In this case, uh, for our exercise, it's seven classes. And this is essentially a weight matrix multiplication followed by a bias term addition. And then softmax function. So the output of the linear layer is then passed through a softmax function which converts the raw output values into class probabilities. The softmax function ensures that the sum of probabilities across all classes equal to one. And finally, prediction. The class with the highest probability is chosen as the final prediction for the given input sequence. So to sum up the overall flow, during the task specific fine tuning, the model learns to adjust weights and biases based on the training data and the target labels. This involves updating both BART, BART models pre-trained parameters and the task specific classification layers parameters through backpropagation and optimization techniques like gradient descent. And this fine tuning process allows the model to adapt to the specific classification task and improve its performance to the given dataset. Now, a common question that you may ask is in the uh, in this uh, task specific fine tuning, do all the weights of the pre-trained BART model gets modified during this fine tuning process or only some of the weights gets modified? Well, during a task specific fine tuning, all of the weights of the pre-trained BART model are potentially subject to modification, including the weights in the embedding layer, the encoder layers, and the classification layers. However, the extent to which each weight is modified depends on the learning rate, the specific task, and the training data. In general, fine-tuning a pre-trained model like BERT involves updating its weights to better adapt to the target task. When fine-tuning begins, the initial weights of the model come from the pre-trained model which has already learned general language representation from a large-scale unsupervised task, for example, master language modeling. And during the fine-tuning, the model is exposed to the particular task-specific training data and labels, and the weights are updated using backpropagation and gradient descent. 
Typically, the learning rate for fine tuning is said to be smaller than the learning rate used during pre-training. This is because the pre-trained model already has a good understanding of language and the fine tuning process aims to make small incremental adjustment to the weights to adapt the model to the specific task without losing the valuable general language knowledge that the model had already acquired during its pre-training phase.